I'm going to initiate um, in the same gaming application that we use to sh demonstrate parsing and the use of cursors, what actually happens when we, uh, to an application when they start to leak cursors. And it's extremely uh, difficult to uh, detect this as a problem uh, until it blows up on you. And as you can see, we have an application here that is running and appearing to run just fine. Um, the performance is great, the response time is great, the transaction rate is great. Um, but what actually I have done is made this application um, leak a cursor every half a percent of every transaction iteration that gets done. And so what you'll notice is that the number of cursors allocated to each session is increasing all the time that we're running this demo. And at this point in time, you can see we're very close to approaching the threshold of the init to aura parameter open cursors, which is set to 300. And you can see immediately, we've got max cursors, we're getting to 300, and we've had one of our sessions hit the error message, aura 1000, maximum number of cursors exceeded. As a result, the application is now throwing errors, and you can see the throughput dropping, CPU is dropping, and basically we're in a situation where we're in experiencing a system outage. Now, let's start thinking about this in terms of uh, what could a DBA do? Well, one of the other options is the DBA is just to increase open curses and sort of sweep the whole problem under the carpet until such time that they run out of curses again. But what might be a better solution for the DBA is to start being a little bit more pro proactive about the whole thing. And instead of just increasing a parameter, how about actually looking to see what's really going on inside the database? So the DBA, instead of just increasing a parameter and making the problem go away for the short term, can be on the proactive and set about doing things that can actually help the development uh, organization such this problem is eliminated altogether. So let's just have a look at one of the sessions uh, that we have. Um, and the thing to notice on this session is that uh, it's reporting errors. We see SQL net break reset to client as one of the wait events, which means it's throwing out errors to the application is issuing that error 1000 um, running out of max open cursors. But let's look at the state of the session that we have that is now experiencing that errors and we can look at its open cursors. Now going in and have a look at the open cursors and perhaps doing a little bit of sorting and I'll sort them twice. You'll notice that say this top insert statement or this select statement has in this case 87 cursors associated with exactly the same SQL statement. This is because the application is leaking the cursor because we've initiated it inside the application. It's probably as a result of an exception being thrown in the application because of some data-driven or application error and they're forgetting to close the cursor before they leave the method and then they re-enter the method and then they open the cursor all over again. And you can see here We've got lots of cursors per SQL statement. The ideal number for that, of course, being one, and you can repeat it all over again. So this is one of the problems we have. Um, and in this case situation, a DBA would be wise to go and speak to the developer and said, did you know this code and this individual SQL statement is being leaked? And as a result, um, we're, we're struggling and we're getting errors. And how about investigating the logic inside your program? Of course, the programmers can make life easier for the DBAs if they were to use things like SQL module action information to tag which parts of the program are initiating the SQL statements, and so they can actually work much more as a team to eliminate problems in the program. So we covered uh, cursor leaking, and we're getting onto the more pathological uh, case is where we get session leaking and it's um, session leaking hurts you most when you've done things correctly 
in that you've managed to build a good connection pool from a large number of Java threads here, in fact 9,600, and managed to share a pool of 96 connections to the database. Now, if we actually make artificially the program throw an error, not, not every half a percent like we did in the cursor leaking error, but actually half of a tenth of a percent, so 0.05%, you can see that's a very tiny margin for error. Um, let's have a look and see what happens to the performance of the system as we start leaking connections programmatically to the database. And you can see as we apply it, very rapidly, you can see that all the connections in the database are being lost programmatically and the throughput drops. Because basically, although we're running at a high transaction rate, it also means that at a high transaction rate, we have a high error rate. And as a result of a high error rate, it, we only take, basically need to have 96 errors. And we've driven the performance of the system literally into the ground and down to zero because now we have no connections left in the pool. They're all being used, and you're actually getting this error message showing up. And this is one of these difficult ones to explain to people, and we're always reluctant to say, oh, we need to run initially with a small connection count. From computer science and correctness, you do. But if you implement it straight away, and you haven't tested for session leaking within your application, you will bring your system to a halt literally as quickly as we just showed you there. And if you're having difficult conversations with middleware and people like that, it's going to be a difficult conversation. So it's important that you test for session leaking very quickly um, as part of the development process and in testing. And one of the best ways to do that is to make your JVMs run with just one connection to the database, because if they leak that connection, the JVM will come to a halt. And the last bit of leaking uh, I'd like to talk about is what happens if we leak a session and that session is holding a lock? Let's have a look at the impact on performance at this point in time when we leak a session that's got a lock held. So I've artificially leaked a session and that every session now at this point in time is going to start wanting to acquire that lock over time. And as you can see, what we'll see as we go scrolling through, and this may, may take a while because we can't have all sessions chasing the same lock, we're starting to see the performance start to degrade as processes start to queue up in the same way as we saw when we lost processes, and we're starting to see NQTX row lock contention show up on the database. This is a function of everybody queuing up behind a single row lock on a process that has been programmatically locked. And you can see performance is dropping, and we're seeing more and more pink um, to indicate processes stuck in a locked state, and the CPU utilization is dropping. So really, um, what a lot of DBAs do, and we'll go back to Enterprise Manager, if we go back to the top sessions screen again, and watch this. Um, If we look at the talk activity in Enterprise Manager, you can see a lot of processes have stopped using the CPU here and are now in a lock state. So let's go and have a look at one of these sessions that's in a lock state. In the same way we looked at their cursors the time before when we were looking at cursor leaking, you can see they're stuck in a lock state, NQTX, row lock contention. A lot of DBAs have learned either programmatically or by inspection, have been learned to look at the blocking tree. And a good indication that you've got a process detached, um, holding a lock. If you look at the lock holder that's holding everybody to ransom, you see them at SQL net message from client, i.e. their program that is holding the lock is waiting for interaction from the outside world to release that lock. But because we lost it programmatically, that message is never going to come back. We're never going to see a commit or rollback. So what a lot of DBAs do is they look at that process, and they go, you're the lock holder. You're my problem. And here we can see at the process that's actually holding that lock, we can kill that session.
And then go look back and see what happens to the performance. You can see everybody was in pink, but now we've released that lock in that session. We go to the throughput by killing that session. It's released all the lock weights and the performance has gone back to where it should be. And the CPU is now getting busy and the system's looking like a healthy system again. But we really do have to ask the question, had the user interface been told that the transaction that they were holding the locks out, was it committed or did it send an error message to the user interface? At this point, potentially, we may have logically corrupted our database by killing that session. Will that come back to hurt us at later? And will our customers suddenly say, I've lost an order, I've missed my flight, I'm not on the seat? This is the sort of thing that where programming errors and then external intervention, just trying to keep the system running, may lead into a logical database corruption.